Welcome to Wednesday evening Bible study on prayer. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us and trust you've had a great week. Looking forward to another Sunday and celebrating Mother's Day. It's going to be a wonderful day. Ladies, we'll have a gift for you. And uh, my wife is going to be speaking to our ladies. And I know it's going to be uh, just a great day. She has a wonderful message about coming to the table. So uh, plan to join us and we'll also be giving you a gift at the end of service. Uh, this session tonight on prayer is the need to travail. I want to kind of set it up because I'm going to read a little more scripture maybe than I do sometimes. So my head be down, uh, be down just a little bit uh, so that I can fully uh, communicate. So I want you to just kind of picture for a second. Jesus is getting ready for the cross. He knows what is facing him. He knows the investment he's made into the disciples the miracles, multiplied miracles. The Bible says there's not even room enough to record all he did while he was on this earth. But uh, he has done all of these miracles. He's uh, delivered people. He's raised the dead. Uh, he has taught his disciples for three years and, and tried to prepare them as best he could with their limited understanding and humanity for the day that he's going to leave. And so he comes to that moment with incredible compassion but travail. So I want you to hear John chapter 17. We really, we call the Lord's Prayer different, but I really believe this is what we should call the Lord's Prayer. It doesn't matter. That's just semantics. But uh, Jesus is praying before he's about to go into this final days before the crucifixion, his death and then resurrection, and the new things he's going to bring into the earth. And listen, I want you to hear this as I read it, because this is his word. As his heart is travailing, he is passionately crying out. You hear the first statement to his heavenly father about the disciples that he has gathered and he has taught them. He's poured into their lives. And, and it would be like uh, someone either retiring or someone maybe, uh, if you look at one of the Old Testament characters, they would pray over their children when they knew death was coming and they would pass a blessing on to them. And, uh, and then it would be somebody retiring. And uh, in fact, um, we experienced a, an event somewhat in our family the year 1984, before my father died in January of 85. We fortunately recorded it, but it was just an unusual moment we didn't really understand till later. And dad took each of us and prayed for us as family members, wives and companions, husbands, every, every, the whole deal and prayed over us and then later on as we look back and listen to that we realize he was in a sense kind of passing the blessing so as i read this hear jesus praying over his disciples but also praying over you tonight and as i read these words and record what he did just listen to this jesus spake these words he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come glorify your son that your son may also glorify you he's, he's he's pouring out his heart he's travailing for us you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent speaking of himself i have glorified you on the earth i have finished the work which you have given me to do and I'm just encouraging you tonight, don't just hear the words, but hear his heart travailing and crying out. He says this, And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself and the glory which I had with you before the world was. And then Jesus begins to pray for his disciples. He says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Here's the travailing. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, travail. Keep them through your name, those that you've given me, that they may be one as we were one and are one. 
While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those who you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, speaking of Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I've also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but for also those who will believe in me through your word. He's praying for us now. He's extending this travail for us, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me. I have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may be whole my glory which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. He's pouring out everything. He's beginning it all to now and coming into the world as the Savior of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known me, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. What's he saying? He's travailing over us and saying, I've poured out my soul. I've poured out what you've given me, Heavenly Father. I've come and declared that I am the Savior of the world, that you are the Heavenly Father, that now I'm going to go back and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And he is, he's pouring out his heart to his Heavenly Father, saying, God, keep them. Reveal your love in them. Let their love, my love be revealed through them. As they go on, keep them. And then he says there in the one statement, and those that will be, those that are far off, those that are going to yet come to know me as Lord and Savior, I'm praying for them. And then we go back to the word that says, He is our intercessor. The Bible says He is at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for us. He's travailing for us to make it, to overcome, to know the truth, to not turn away from the truth. And uh, we have in Scripture, I'll, I'll bring the reference later. Well, I, I could just, Psalms 32, 7, he says he sings songs of deliverance over this. Can you imagine Jesus in heaven singing songs of deliverance over us? He's tra travailing, saying, I want them to make it. I want you to open their eyes. I don't want them to miss heaven. I don't want them to miss the rapture. And he's pouring that over us. And you go back to his statement, he said, I would that none should perish. Can you hear that travail over you today? You know what he's saying over the world today and all of our lostness and all of the turning away from him and losing the fact that he is the savior of the world, he still loves us. He's still praying over us. He's still trusting and, and pleading with us. And he pleads, the Bible says, through the church that we could be saved. So travailing in prayer is really taking hold. And I, so let me make that real for a second to us. Are, are we travailing over our friends who are lost? I hope we are. I am. There's some there's some people I know right now that I'm saying, God, please open their eyes. I pray for them daily. I say, God, please open their eyes. Please bring them home. Whatever you have to do in their lives to bring them home, I don't want them to miss heaven. I don't want one of my children to miss heaven. I don't want one of our, one of our church members to miss heaven. Well, that's why we pray over each other. By the grace of God, we're going to make it. We don't have to walk around in fear, but the facts are sometimes we have to travail for somebody for them to make it. We have done that for several people in our lifetime and to watch them turn back to God with great rejoicing just as the prodigal son came back and the father received him. But that father kept agonizing. I want you to hear that in travail. It's, God, we can't afford to lose them. We can't afford to lose the blessings that we have from God. I can't afford for this person I've known that you let me cross their path I can't let them go to hell. They still have to make the decision. I understand that. God understands that. Every man has to choose. We have to choose him as Savior and Lord. But let's just keep travailing because time is short. And so I encourage you. That was his prayer. And um, Jesus keeps 
going along and surveilling again in John chapter 12, Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assured I say to you, unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and it remains alone, if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life to the world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will offer honor. Now my soul is troubled. He goes on. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. This was his last travail just before he went to the cross. And he's struggling in his humanity, but in his God part, he knows he has to go to the cross. And he says, if this cup could pass from me, I'm for that. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Can you get the picture of travailing today? It's a prayer I pray often. Lord, whatever it takes. When I'm pleading for somebody that I know is lost and I can see the fruit of their life is not following God, I just start praying with an attitude. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep travailing until God brings them home because eternity is way too long. And I encourage us in these days in which we're living, it's a lot of uncertain things. We need the spiritual veil to come upon us to say, I'm not giving up. I see my kids. I see my grandkids that need Jesus. I need a friend, a neighbor, somebody around here that needs Jesus. Because one second on the other side of our last breath, we need to make it. And so we travail as though it was our family or ourselves. And... Um, let me go back again also. Uh, the other time he is there in agonizing in, in Luke 22 when he's getting ready for to go to the cross. He's coming out. He went to the Mount of Olives and there was a cup of doing with his disciples who followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. He withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it's your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy's be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. And being in agony or travail, we could use the same word there, he prayed more earnestly. Travailing doesn't give up. It just keeps pushing. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He arose from prayer, came to his disciples. He found them sleeping from sorrow. They weren't travailing, and we all have those moments in our humanity. We don't do what we should, but this is a day and a time in history we need to travail for our country for the lost, against this virus. We don't need to let up until God answers. That's what travail does. It just keeps pushing until God answers, and so we trust him. He said to them, why do you sleep? Pray, lest you enter temptation. Of course, he goes on later and says, could you not just tarry with me one hour? Could you not just carry this load? Uh, if God has allowed your heart to come to that place, cherish it. If you've learned to travail for someone until they're either healed or saved or delivered, that's uh, a gift from God. That Jesus did that example for us, and he loves us. He is our refuge and hope. Psalms 48, verses 1 and 6, God is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is in their palaces. He is known as a refuge. For behold, the kings assembled. They passed together. They saw it and they marveled. They were troubled. They hastened away. Fear took hold of them and pain as of a woman in birth. That's the description of travail. It's uh, only the ladies know. Um, have great uh, compassion for the creation of the women that God has created. But to carry a child, they come to that point of travail for the time of birth. Uh, that dream, that uh, vision of having that child is there. And when that moment of travail hits, there's no backing out. There's no changing. It, it has to come out. And it's it's a very um, incredible place. I remember my wife, I wanted to tell this story, as, as we had our first child, Melissa. Uh, and uh, she was praying about it and and. As I would say the majority of women do, it's great to be with a child. And then all of a sudden, one day you realize uh, this baby's got to come out. 
And at that moment, Cynthia was struggling with fear and saying, Lord, I see this baby and how is this going to work? And I'll never forget we were in revival. A, a minister from California at the church we were at in Dallas came, Brother Halverson, and he was praying for people and they were uh, being slain in the spirit. It was just a great service. And so uh, Cynthia was saying, Lord, I really need to be delivered from this fear of having this child. And uh, so she said, I I'm, I'm going to go be prayed for. And in her mind, she said, now, Lord, I know you wouldn't let me be slain in the spirit because I'm pregnant. I'm about eight months pregnant. And so she went down front and surely enough, Brother Howerson just barely touched her. And she just went out gently like on a big pillow, laid down. She got up from that, totally delivered from fear. Uh, went into the childbirth just about 30 days later. And uh, Melissa was actually born in about 45 minutes. And so... And it was an amazing birth. But the great thing was from that day forward, God took her away from that fear of the travailing that was yet to come. And sometimes we get a vision in our heart uh, of uh, it could be a ministry. It could be a new business. Uh, and we begin to think about it. And then you have to come to that point and make that decision and say, okay, we're going to launch. There's no turning back. And at that, that moment, the travailing of that vision or that child or that ministry is going to go forth and God's going to bring it. And then there's some great things that happen after that is that uh, uh, the Bible describes it. It says this in John 16, 21, a woman when she's in labor has sorrow because of her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being or a baby, we could say, that's being born into the world. There's the agonizing sometimes to pray somebody through, to pray about them coming to Jesus, and then suddenly they're born in the kingdom, and they make that turning, and uh, we've seen that so many times in our lives. It's such a joy, and you forget all the pain and the nights and the, that you had to pray, and maybe woke up in the middle of the night concerned about them, and you had to travail about them being saved. So it's, it's a wonderful thing, but travail brings us to the birthing of that vision. And I encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit um, to pull us to travail for people. This is the time. This is today. We can't take a chance. Uh, I think most of you are seeing the signs around us setting up for the rapture and then the Two witnesses will be here, not going to do all that teaching tonight. And then the Antichrist, it's going to be a terrible time. The time to travail is now that they make heaven, that they miss, don't miss this moment of grace. Uh, Paul describes it this, speaking to the Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. What was he saying? I'm going to keep praying. I'm laboring. I'm pouring out my soul to make sure that you know Jesus Christ. Uh, do you feel that? I, I hope we feel that as a church. Um, and then in the Colossians, he, he's talking again. He says, this, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 11, we have not stopped praying for your travailing. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you have great endurance and patience. Uh, praying for others is so important right now. The Bible says when you see your friend overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, you which are past the spiritual test, when the translation says, pass the test, restore them, considering yourself. Restore them. That's what God wants us to do, not to be someone that beats him down. So, Travail contends for the lost, for the miracle, for the answer. It keeps pushing, and that passion moves us to travail. When you really care about something, um, it doesn't matter if it's a hobby you love, you're going to push through. You're going to go get the stuff. You're going to go get the boat. You're going to get the hunting gear. Uh, whatever it takes, that travail comes, and you keep asking and asking uh, Almost like a child does at Christmas. If they want a bicycle, they'll probably ask you 50 times, maybe 100 times, because they really want that. So he wants us. So we are in this moment, 
And uh, I think it's the greatest moment of travail we need for our, our country, for our leaders, for the lost. Uh, this is the moment. We really need to be alert uh, because a new kingdom is about to come right after the rapture of the church. And I plan to be a part of that. So travail is the dying part of prayer, dying to myself and my will as Jesus did. Leonard Raverhill said it this way, it's true that science has eliminated some of the suffering of our mothers that know childbirth, but science will never shrink the love or the pain or the discomfort of the months it takes to form that child within the womb because the travail is coming when that baby is born. Travail is the energy put in our prayer combined with the will of God. We, we can't ask for something that's not his will, but when we find out his will, we can travail. Spurgeon said it this way, God does not hear us because of the length of our prayer, but because of the sincerity of it or the travail of it according to his will that we pray. And, uh, and then in Matthew 6, 5, and 8, we know this. It says, when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and corners of the streets that they may be seen. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you travail or pray, it go into your room or closet, some of the translations say. When you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they'll be heard for the many words. So God knows what we have need of before we even ask him, before we ask him. So pray the word. Travail is the depth of desire in our spirit that comes out through prayer. What do you desire today? What do you want God to do? And then Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you may receive them and you will have them. When we know it's God's will, we can stay there at the place as Elizabeth did when she wanted a child who became John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Uh, even to the point that Zechariah came through and said, you must be drunk. She said, no, my weeping, my travailing to have a child is so strong, I can't get away from it. That's the way we need to be about this kingdom work in the last days. It's a desire to move into a deep-seated craving. What do you crave? If you love chocolate pie and you start thinking about it, you know what's going to happen. You're going to keep pushing until you get a piece of it. And that's the way travail works. When we get the picture of what God wants to do, and I believe we're in a moment God wants to do some awesome things. My daily prayer is, God, I'm ready as much as I know how to be for a sovereign move of the Holy Spirit. I'm ready for the harvest of souls. I'm ready for miracles to break forth. Now, I don't know about you, I crave them to happen. And through that, it drives me to pray every day for miracles to happen. They're happening all around us. And I just encourage you, what is it that you really crave inside that you know God wants to do? If you'll give into that, he will pray through you. He will intercede through you. In the book of Romans, it says, when you don't want to know what to pray, the Spirit prays through you. That travailing can happen by the Holy Spirit with groanings that cannot be uttered. I pray that God would speak to each of us to allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us that we might travail. It says, when Zion travails, sons and daughters are born into the kingdom. Can we do that together? I want to pray for us tonight. If you have a need, call the church, 918-540-1585. We're looking forward to Sunday. I pray you're blessed tonight. Take a moment tonight. And say, God, what do I really want? Help the Holy Spirit to pray through me. Let me pray and travail until it happens, until God moves from heaven. Let me pray for us tonight. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I am so excited about this moment that we're living in. As difficult as it is, with many things that I don't understand or anybody else does, I know God uses these moments to do great things. That's proven, and it's going to happen again. Let me pray for us tonight. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit, whether in English or in another language, will travail through us, will speak through us, will put us in that place, Lord, that we, in a sense, the old term, we prayed through until God did it. Lord, I know the timing and your will is all involved, and we trust you with that. 
But I pray, God, that you would just let all of our hearts be ignited to be aware where we're at and to travail until heaven's will is done and the lost come in before the rapture of the church. We love you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you Sunday.